When you picture a dinosaur in its natural environment, you might imagine a great beast living in a dense jungle, trudging through a smelly, primordial swamp under the scorching heat of a harsher, more ancient sun. It is true that during the Mesozoic era, the age when dinosaurs existed, global temperatures were higher than they are today, resulting in a warmer, more tropical climate. But the dinosaurs were masters of their domain, and in reality, they lived in a vast swath of different environments. In particular, new finds from the top of the world are beginning to show just how adaptable they really were. For over 150 years, North America has been a frontier for dinosaur discoveries. The dry badlands of the American West have proven to be especially rich in dinosaur fossils. It was there that Jurassic giants like Brontosaurus, Stegosaurus, and Allosaurus were first found. In much younger sediments, dating back to a time called the Cretaceous, paleontologists discovered new animals from a very different stage in dinosaur evolution. But some of the most promising, untapped dinosaur boneyards in America aren't to be found in the rolling hills of Montana, but on the frozen ice fields of the North Pole. Expeditions to the 69 million year old rocks of the Prince Creek Formation in Alaska have yielded a great cache of dinosaur bones. At the Liscombe Bone Bed and the similarly aged Keekok Tagosik Quarry, paleontologists have excavated thousands of bones from a chaotic jumble of disjointed skeletons. Since the 1980s, 13 distinct species of dinosaur have been found on Alaska's northern slope. Many Arctic species are only known from fragments such as this strange fossil. This tiny bone is actually a piece of skull from a brand new species named Alaskacephaly in 2006. Alaskacephaly would have been a small member of the Alaskan dinosaur community. Originally found in Alberta, Canada, the 8 meter long Pachyrhinosaurus was a large beast, weighing in at 4 tons. When its fossils began to appear in Alaska, the true extent of its range was fully realized. Instead of sporting a nasal horn, like most horned dinosaurs, Pachyrhinosaurus had a thick growth of bone called a boss on its face. Great numbers of them, ranging from small babies to fully grown adults have been found on the northern slope, indicating that they were a common sight 70 million years ago and would have spent their time grazing on various low-lying plants. At first glance, Pachyrhinosaurus, with its gnarly face, might seem like an oddity, but a couple million years before, they and their close relatives were much more widespread. These Alaskan animals were the last of their kind and would ultimately be replaced by the larger, more famous Triceratops, which wouldn't evolve for about another million years or so. More than 6,000 bones from duck-billed herbivores have been found at Liscombe. Since the 1990s, these bones were assigned to Edmontosaurus, a massive herbivore found in great numbers across western North America. After studying the bones more carefully, however, paleontologists realized that they were actually from a totally new kind of dinosaur. In 2015, they named the Arctic hadrosaur Ugrunalik, meaning ancient grazer in a native Alaskan language. With great batteries of teeth in their jaws, hadrosaurs like Ugrunalik were masterfully adapted to process plant matter. As in any dinosaur ecosystem, Wherever herbivores roam, carnivores will surely follow. Fragmentary fossils show that large predators stalked this ancient land. Teeth, bits of skull and jaw provide the first direct evidence of polar tyrannosaurs. Named Nanoxaurus in 2014, this dinosaur was only about half the size of T-Rex, but still yielded the most iconic of tyrannosaur features, like a powerful skull lined with dozens of massive teeth, as well as a pair of small, two-clawed hands. Plant fossils from the area reveal that ferns and cycads covered the ground, while conifer trees reached up into the Cretaceous sky. Plants like these are often found in hot, temperate climates, a very typical dinosaur habitat. But that's only half the story. During summertime, for about a month each year, the sun doesn't set on the northern slope, and Alaska basks in sunlight for days and days. But in the height of winter, the northern slope spends almost six weeks in complete darkness. During the Cretaceous period, a seaway divided North America into several major islands. Laramidia, the west island, was four times closer to the North Pole than it is today, 
so the shifts between constant daylight and constant darkness were even more extreme. The summers would have been a veritable dinosaurian paradise where the sun was out and vegetation was plentiful for much of the year. But at the end of the long summer, the northern dinosaurs would have been plunged into four long months of darkness, and despite the higher than average global temperature, it's still thought that winters got cold enough for snow to fall. While dinosaurs in the south left their footprints in sand and mud, these polar beasts left their tracks in the snow. One of the Alaskan dinosaurs in particular was especially well equipped for life during the bitter Arctic winters. Teeth of another killer dinosaur, an intelligent raptorial predator called Troodon, appear at the same sites. But while the Troodon fossils in Montana represent an animal only about three feet tall, the teeth found in the Arctic are much bigger, from animals twice the normal size. Well-preserved fossils of Troodon's brain case, the portion of the skull that housed the brain, show that it was enlarged to make room for massive optic lobes, indicating that it had highly acute vision. Since it could see in low-light conditions, it had an edge on its prey and would have had no trouble feeding itself in the long winters. For most animals, winter was a struggle, but Troodon was perfectly adapted for life in darkness. Winter would have been a dangerous time to be an herbivore, and not just because of the threat from predators. Hunger would have stricken sharper than the bite of any tyrannosaur. Of all the wonders of the natural world, of all the sights that I could have the pleasure of witnessing, few are as vivid or as enchanting as the idea of dinosaurs living at the top of the world. In the midst of a violent snowstorm, a vast herd of duck-billed Ugrunalik drift across a flat landscape in search of decaying food scraps left over from the previous summer. The squeaks of babies scrambling amongst one another are drowned out by the great bellows and groans of the adults. Trailing the herd are a group of several Alaska cephali hoping to forage on the scraps of rotten plants that the hadrosaurs had missed. A pair of Pachyrhinosaurus are seen snapping rotten logs with their powerful beaks to chew on the nearly frozen bark. As a fluffy Troodon tries to snag a small mammal before it can reach the safety of its burrow, it's scared off by a much bigger hunter. Tyrannosaurs stuck these frozen wastes. Nanaxaurus shadows the herd, meticulously placing her three-toed feet softly into fresh snow, one foot after the other. Stopping to sniff the air, her magnificent coat of white plumage becomes shrouded in a fine layer of frost, camouflaging her body in the snowy backdrop. She catches onto the herd's trail and picks up her pace, her breath clearly visible in great steamy clouds as she pants to keep her lungs fed with oxygen. Her cover is blown, and the herd panics. She strikes, shrieks, echo for miles. The next day, the only traces of the events that transpired are footprints of struggling animals slowly being filled in by another snowstorm beneath the shimmering green lights of the Aurora Borealis, dancing in the night sky. Of the 13 dinosaur species collected from the Prince Creek Formation, only four have been named so far. There are surely hundreds of other strange and exciting animals locked in Alaskan stone, but they will only be revealed to the world through the work of dedicated scientists, fossil hunters looking to piece together the final act in the Age of Dinosaurs. In the coming years, I'll be eager to hear about new fossil finds in the frozen wastes, which will continually remind us of just how magical these creatures really were.